name is James Whitbeck, and I am a traditional oil painter from Western Let's Massachusetts, uh, living along the beautiful Connecticut River. Let's go sailing on the sea. Let's go dancing on the gym. One of the main questions that I get is, where did you get your training? And I am self-taught. I uh, have a love for the old 17th century Dutch, um, and that was the seed, that was the spark that uh, launched me off into doing these old-time paintings. When I start a painting, I'll do the setup right, right in front of the easel. I find that that's the best way to uh, really capture the objects in a painting, opposed to working from a photo. You know, move them just so, have the light, natural lighting always coming in. It's working from life, it really is the still light. And so that's how I find the best way to really bring my paintings to life, is, is actually looking at the real objects right there in front of you. I will stretch my own canvases. And there's something about stretching a canvas too, you kind of, it's more hands-on. You know, when you're painting at the easel, it's, uh, it's very quiet, it's very uh, subtle, it's very subdued. Um, so it's kind of nice to kind of break that for a little bit and, uh, you know, get your pliers out, get your scissors, and, you know, your, uh, get your framing square and your, uh, your hammer and tacks to put the, the canvas on. So it's a whole different feel and you feel like you're more part of of, uh, physically part of the painting. One of the creative things about painting is you're always evolving and always um, working into new subject matter. Because it's just growing, it's moving, and it's always evolving. And um, creatively, that's uh, what I find very fascinating. After you've stretched your canvas or after you've prepared your panel, you will gesso it, you'll prime it. But that's the very first thing, and it's a white coat that covers um, your raw canvas or um, your darker panel. But when you start painting, you don't want to be painting, you don't want to start from um, this glaring white uh, surface. So what you do is you tone it down a little bit with a little thinned out raw umber, burnt umber, and you kind of do wash that on there. It's very thin, very washy. And that goes over the whole surface. So that tones it down and gives a nice background to work from. And from there, you do what's called the underpainting. If you don't have the right blueprint, if you don't have the right foundation, um, everything else kind of gets askew and doesn't work. So you have to have the underpainting just right. Once that's dry, you start working on color. You add what's called local color. You're not getting too fancy, too complicated yet. It's the red of an apple. It's the white of a, a, a page of a book. It's, uh, you know, it's the basic color for each object. And it's basically uh, very thin layers of oil. The thing about this technique is that you definitely have to have patience. So you have to let the previous layer dry fully, which can be a day, can be a couple days, um, depending on what kind of uh, colors you use. So the Renaissance painting behind me took about um, two months to finish that one. Then you start working on trying to bring in the, the highlighted areas, start to form and shape your objects. And still at this stage, it's still a little rough looking, still a little fuzzy looking. It's almost like uh, focusing a camera, just, you know, you set your camera up on object and you slowly start to bring it in focus. And that's the whole idea behind this painting, this technique. Is you're slowly bringing it in focus. And um, then of course the very final last stages are just those highlight of an orange, something like that. Um, and then when that's all dry, that's when the varnish goes on. Um, and that's what gives it that ultra shiny look. 
was my training. My training is here in the studio. It's at the National Gallery in Washington. It's at the Rikes Museum. Um, it's out on the street talking with uh, uh, artist friends and, um, and just uh, many quiet hours behind the easel. You just never know where uh, your next painting is going to come from. So each of these pieces, each of the paintings, they're all unique and they're all different. So I'm very excited to see what's coming down the road. You know, figures, darks and lights, who knows? It's, uh, there's so much out there, so uh, I'm looking forward to the future. Shining bright